Hiya folks, I'm doing this little intro today, tucked away from the fierce Aberdeen wind. Welcome to Commercial Quay and welcome to the North Link. Now I'm going to be doing a ferry journey tonight a wee bit different. Normally I love an overnight ferry tucked away in your cabin, but what's it like when, like me, you can't afford a cabin? Or certainly you can't justify it when you're travelling on your own. To give you an example, this ferry is costing me £36 each way. To add a cabin on would be a supplement of over £120 each way, so I just can't justify it tonight. So welcome to a cheapskate review. We're going to see what it's like with this return journey on board for about 26 hours without a bed. Let's get going. I ran into a bit of a problem straight away, something that I'm finding more and more these days as I was challenged for filming, despite always being really discreet. I don't really understand the issue, as all I do is advertise their product for free, though I guess that's proof that this isn't a sponsored video. For tonight's journey, I've booked myself one of the pods on board, which is technically like a business class seat, but it's a product that's been slammed in online reviews, so it'll be really interesting to see what it's like. On the return journey, I don't even have that, I'm just going to be in a bog standard reclining seat and I don't sleep too well when I'm travelling, so this could be a bit of a brutal journey. I'll just deal with you. Hiya. There's only two decks for public access. Deck 5 is where all the cabins are and everything else is on deck 6. That's where I'll be in the pod lounge, you've got the restaurant, the Magnus lounge, the shop and there's a little cinema there somewhere as well. When you get on board you get a wee card for your pod lounge and there's also some toilets here with showers. I'm not sure if they're just for pod customers, but we'll find out. At first glance, the pods look pretty good value to be fair, a bit like an ageing airlines business class seat with good storage, the customary pillow and blanket, and one of those foot rests that I never use anywhere. Oh, and you're not going to miss this, it's the biggest table anywhere on the high seas. Ok, on to the armrests, and on the right hand side you've got USB charging and light controls, and on the left it's the recline button, dropping you back far enough for some decent privacy, but I was still concerned about that legroom. For comparison, here's a look at the regular recliners in the main cabin, a much cheaper option at £3.50 against the £18 for the pods. Even if you don't have a pod, there's plenty of benches where you can stretch out and at least get a nap. And I've seen people before just lying down on the carpet as well overnight with sleeping bags, so that's another idea. I've decided to grab some dinner before we set sail so I can film us leaving the harbour. And this is quite good, I got a brew dog beer and beef olives and it was 12 quid. The beef olives are pretty good to be fair, but I'll be back to the fish and chips for the return journey. Cheers guys. I'm hoping that's not an omen. This wee deck at the stern of the ship is primarily for smoking, but if you travel in the winter, this is probably the only outside area that's going to be open. But today, we've got upstairs as well.
Now we're out in the North Sea, it's starting to get cold, so I'm heading back inside. As you'd expect, the bar is the real heart of the ship, and priced well for drinks too at around £4 a pint, and there's a big TV to help you pass the time. The shop is small, but it's well stocked with all the usual suspects you'd find on any ship this size, including some products made on Orkney and Shetland. Toilet review time. I know we've just set sail, but it's spotlessly clean in here. And a shower as well. I'm really tempted to try that out, but I don't have a towel. Ah, okay, you need a little token to use the shower, and you can hire a towel for two quid. Meanwhile, back in the pod, I passed some time recharging my batteries and, well, recharging my batteries until it was time for a wee something to help me sleep. We're cutting through some pretty heavy seas now, but nothing this ship can't handle. Believe it or not, it's almost 10pm and it's still like broad daylight out here. I went up on the top deck for a wee while, but it was way too windy, so I'm back down here. I'll come back out in a wee while. I'm fascinated to see how dark it will actually get. Ugh, that's a heavy door. You can see here that every seat is tied down. These ships are built for big seas. The bar's now gone from full to pretty much empty. That's probably something to do with the tennis match being finished now. Nadal's just won. We're doing most of our sailing in Cromarty and wind gusting six Sea state, slight or moderate? Slight or moderate? I've not got sea legs, I tell you, I can barely walk. It's just coming up towards midnight now, so just a final little look around the ship and a stretch of the legs before we try and get some sleep. The pod seats are really good for sitting in, but it's a different matter for sleeping, I think. I can't fully stretch my legs, and I think that's gonna be a problem tonight. I've taken a towel and a shower token, so I'll be able to freshen up in the morning. Even if I don't get much sleep, I'm gonna be okay, I think. It's all very quiet out here on the aft deck. Darkness has fallen at last and there's a bit of rain started as well. All I can see is a couple of lights from ships off in the far distance and the swell's still pretty bad. So I'm struggling to walk straight. That's not because I spent some time in the bar. And they've now closed off access to the upper decks. I'm not sure if that's because it's night time or if because the weather's just kind of closing in a bit. Let's get back inside. Aye, it's a bit wild out there. It's lovely to be able to walk through the ship at this time though, it's so quiet. This is just like the kind of restaurant area, so there's no comfy seats, so there's nobody actually sleeping here. They're more up towards the bow. Over to my left, that's where I'll be back in about four hours to get my breakfast. Oh, what I'd do for a cabin right now. I was tempted to use my shower token tonight, but I think it'll be better to refresh a bit in the morning. Right, let's get back into the pods. It's time to be as quiet as possible. folks well that was one hell of a night I think I've maybe had one hour's sleep so it's time for a shower you can see the coast of Shetland now wherever I'm traveling if I can get a shower unexpectedly it's such a treat the restaurant should be open for breakfast in about 10 minutes. I think it opens at 6.30 and I should really just take on as much food as I can just now. I'm not sure the next time I'm gonna be able to eat today. Time for some fresh air. Ugh. So 
So how was the sleeping pod in the North Link? Seriously, pretty bad. It was okay as a day seat, but as soon as you went back and tried to sleep there, it was a different story. Maybe I'm just too big, but I couldn't stretch my legs. And that's a real problem for me when I'm trying to sleep, especially as I've got quite dodgy knees. So it was quite painful at times as well. And there was just no space to move about. I think in theory, it's a really cool concept, but in practice, it doesn't really work. Look at my breakfast, fantastic. Cheers, guys. So good. That's us just arriving into port now, but we had a different approach this morning. We went round the back of Bresse, so it was so good to see the high cliffs on the far side. I've never gone that way before. Normally, it just comes straight into Lerwick. But the main thing is, we're on time. Welcome to Shetland, folks. I'm going to head off now and film another wee video here in Shetland, and I'll see you back on board for the return in about 36 hours. Right, folks, let's get back on board for the return ferry to Aberdeen. And this time I'm not paying the £18 supplement for a pod. Oh no, I'm going with the cheapest ticket possible. And that's a supplement of £3.50 for a reclining seat. What's more, this ferry is going to be longer, about an hour and a half longer, because we're going to be calling in at Kirkwall and Orkney on the way home. Although the weather's still closing in and it's going to be dark, so I don't think we're going to see much. It's still about an hour and a half before we sail, but I'm getting on board early so I can find a nice quiet corner of the ship to base myself for the next 14 hours. I've not quite found my favourite seat, but I've found a really quiet corner and it's long enough to actually stretch out, so I think it should actually be more comfortable than the pods. My early boarding plan has been thwarted. There's been a security announcement saying you can't just leave your stuff at a seat. So if I go for a wander or go for something to eat, then I'll lose my seat instantly. I haven't quite worked out what to do yet, but I don't want to just sit down there for 13 hours. That'd be the most boring video ever, wouldn't it? I think my channel needs an assistant who can just sit with the bags. Who can I get to do that? Arrival time, we should be in uh, slightly earlier into Kirkwall tonight, should be long south at about half past ten and uh, down to Aberdeen for seven o'clock tomorrow morning. I've literally only just noticed we're on a different ship tonight. The reason I noticed is because the winch only text is printed differently on the deck. These are sister ships but they are pretty much identical sisters. Our next door neighbour, the Heliar, that's also branded up as a Northlink. I didn't know anything about this one. I guess though it must be like a dedicated cargo ship. Traded my comfy bench seat for views like that and food like that. I got all excited because I went back to the bow of the ship and my seat was still there. And then I realised why it was still there. Five minutes after sitting down, I was feeling so sick. There's a really big swell tonight and up at the bow is not the place to be. So I've come back to the after the ship, I've come outside to get some fresh air. Actually feels a wee bit better here, but I think midships is the place to be tonight. One of the great things about going back via Kirkwall is that you do a really close sail past Fair Isle. This is 
such a thrill for me. Fair Isle is a dream destination. I haven't had the luck to go there yet, but hopefully someday. tied up in Kirkwall now, although it's more like what maybe Ryanair would call Kirkwall. We're miles from town, but anyway that signals time for me to go downstairs and find somewhere to sleep. The ship's a bit mental tonight, it's like a mix of drunk people and excited teenagers just running about everywhere. There might be a few of these getting used. Anyway, the bar is almost closed, it's almost midnight. I kind of hope it quietens down a bit. I'd still rather be here than caged in one of the pods, but we'd like to get some rest, and it might be right here. This is already so much better than spending almost 20 quid in a pod. And my secret weapon? Smelly feet, no one will come near me. Good morning folks, that's us just coming into Aberdeen Harbour now, so how was it last night? Uh, it was okay, I'm not going to say it was easy, but it was still much better than in the pods. I was more comfortable, able to stretch out, I probably only got about the same amount of sleep as I did in the pod, but it was just so much better to be in the main cabin and have free reign of the whole place, find somewhere comfortable to sit and to sleep and you could just go for a walk as well, you weren't restricted to that one space. So I would always take the reclining seat option rather than the pod because you don't have to sit in one of the reclining seats, you can just lie anywhere. I'll probably just go and brush my teeth now, get into Aberdeen, get back down to Stonehaven and sleep for the rest of the morning. So there we have it folks, welcome back to the Granite City after a total of 26 hours aboard without a bed. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it interesting and I'd love to know your thoughts as well. Would you consider a cabin a luxury or a necessity? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again somewhere soon. Bye bye.